Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Tom. Welcome back. This is part six. Uh, in part six, we're going to get the ball bouncing back and forth across the screen, just horizontally at first. Uh, but let's go ahead and review what we did last time. So last time I created a new variable called y. Uh, I talked about scope and then I talked about this frame rate here. And this frame rate is what calls the draw loop or tells the draw loop how many times to be called every second. So in this case, it's 60, and so it'll try to call the draw loop 60 times every second. Now, it might not uh, be able to do that just because the computer might not be fast enough, or you might have other things running that's taking up the CPU time, but it'll try to get to 60 as best it can. Uh, I, I chose 60 for a reason, just because that seems to be a fairly good frame rate on computers where you, you don't really see any any glitchiness or any type of skip frame type stuff. Uh, and, and that means like the lower you get the, the frame rate, the easier, the slower things are going to run your computer. But if you're doing animations that cover a ball moving very quickly across the screen, the ball will look like it's jumping. So like skipping frames if I set the frame rate too low. Or it might, uh, things will just kind of jump around or they won't calculate quite correctly. So Keeping, I can keep the frame rate high, uh, around 60 or so. Other type of anima animations can be set to 30 or 25, things like that. Movies, oftentimes, uh, when you're filming a movie or something, is set to like 25 or 30. Uh, but right now, 60 is good. Uh, the other important point about this was only set frame rate one time, set it in, in setup, and just leave it for the entire application. Don't change it while the program's running. I mean, you can, but it's not good practice for for the future. So just kind of keeping that uh, the frame of mind that you want one set frame rate. All right, the other things we, we talked about were uh, how to change this ellipse and how to kind of make it uh, different colors and, and change the outline of the actual shape itself. So you notice we have fill here. And fill, if you remember right, was going to change the color of the inside of our ellipse. So in this case, we have 255, which is red. Then we had stroke, and stroke changes the outline color. And then stroke weight changes the outline thickness. So in this case, it's four pixels. So looking at this, you could imagine we have a red circle with a green outline, and a the outline has a width of four pixels. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so there it goes. All right, and the object now is we want this ball to bounce off this wall and come back here. So we're going to use something different, something called an if statement. And you're going to use if statements from now until you, you're done programming. So an if statement is this, and a statement in here needs to be true or false. All right, and I, I, this is not code. This is just, uh, well, this true is code and this false is code, this or is not. This is just me uh, outlining what this needs to be. So this statement, an if statement, will only run the code between its, between its, uh, its braces if the statement inside here is true, only if it's true. If it's false, it won't run. So we want this statement, we want to do this, we want to make sure that this statement's true and this is the code we want to run when it's true. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we want this to not be adding one because we want the ball to come back. So we actually want, oh, I can't leave that in there. Let me, uh, let me just delete that right now. We'll come back to that in just a minute. We want the X is adding, 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 adding. We want when the ball gets here, we want it to now subtract and we want the ball to come back this way. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna use this and we're gonna check if X is greater than something. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this as 500 first because that's the width of our screen, but we're gonna fix this in just a minute to, to accommodate the, the fact that uh, our, our the the point that we're looking at is actually in the center of our ball. We're also going to change that 500 to be something a, a little bit a little bit better. Uh, you'll see in just a minute. So if x is bigger than 500, you want to minus x. Now your first inclination, and I've seen a lot of people do this, they say, all right, well I'll just do this then. This makes sense, right? Okay. So let's see what happens if we do it. Well, the ball will come across just like normal. 
Now when x gets over here, you're going to see it stops and doesn't go anywhere. Well, that's, that's good. We got the ball to stop at the edge. Well, notice we have a problem. One, it's not stopping as if it's hitting the edge. It's stopping at the middle of the circle. And second, it's not coming backwards. Well, then that means this must not be working, right? Well, it actually is working, but what's happening is when x gets over 500, you start subtracting 1, but the loop every time is still adding 1. So it's just stuck at 500. It adds 1, minus 1, add 1, minus 1. It's going from, from 500 to 501, and then we're subtracting 1, so it goes back to 500. Then it comes back and it adds 1, and it keeps doing that back and forth and back and forth. So the ball is not going anywhere. So we actually, what we need to do is we need to change the direction that this is going. We don't, we don't want to do this in here. What we want to do is we want to change this to be minus 1. All right, so this needs to be a minus 1 instead of a positive 1. So that way we're subtracting now. And we only want to do that, change it when x gets over 500. So we need to create a new variable. And I'm going to call this uh, x delta. And I'm going to say x delta is equal to 1. And I'm going to put x delta here. Now, if you don't know what delta means, it just means uh, change. It's a, it's a word used it's a word used in math, and I'm going to use it because you'll probably see it other places, x delta, or you might see um, like x theta, or just other things like that. Uh, a lot of times in these programming tutorials, they'll use, they'll use math terminology, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that because I want you to be able to use other tutorials you might, you might see in the future. So right now, x delta equals 1. And that's that's fine. So it's it's gonna work just like normal if I do this. The ball's gonna come across, no problem, nothing changes at all. But when I get over this, I want to change x delta to be negative one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set it here for now. You're gonna see x delta equals negative one, and this will work just fine. Okay, so I'm kind of going step by step. If you see how to do this on your own, then that's fine, but I'm kind of going step by step the way a person might see it when they try it for the first time. So the problem is when we get to here, it's going to go right off. All right. So we need to now change that. So we need to make another if statement and say if x is less than 0, then what do I need to make x delta? Well, I need to make x delta equal to 1, right? All right, very good. So what's going to happen is the ball is going to come across and the ball will bounce off that and the ball is going to come all the way back and it's going to take a little bit there and there we go. The ball's now bouncing back and forth. Awesome, we're done, right? Well, we are done, but this code actually really sucks. It's not done in the best way possible. One, if I want to change the speed of my ball, I have to now change it in three places. And then that's not really good programming practice. It's better to be able to change something in one place. Second, let's try to change the size of my screen just a little bit. So let's make the screen a little bit wider. I'll make it 600. So now here comes my ball and it's coming across. And you'll notice that this is set up for 500. So look, it bounces off at the 500 mark, not at the edge of my screen. So that's kind of poor practice. So we're going to change something here first. I'm going to change this to be width. And this is a, a special term that is, is used to give you the size of the screen. So if you've run this function, size function, this right here will be set a width, and there's also something called height. So you can always have these two variables that measure width and height. All right, uh, so now it's bouncing back and forth, but we kind of want to be able to adjust the speed in one place. And you also notice that when the ball gets here, it doesn't bounce nice and, nice and neatly against this side. So what I want to do is I want to adjust that first so the ball is bouncing straight off the wall. And that has to be done based on the the size of my ellipse. And the problem is, is my ellipse is 25 pixels wide. So it's actually going 12.5 pixels off the screen before it hits the center of the ellipse. 
Now, I'm going to do one thing to make this the calculation a bit easier. I'm going to set my ellipse to be 20 pixels. And if I wanted to bounce off the edge of the screen correctly, I'm going to minus 10. So why do I minus 10? Well, if the width is 500 and the ellipse is 20 and the center of the ellipse is what we're measuring from, then it's going to move partly off the screen before it hits. So let me just go ahead and draw this in here for you. So here we've got the screen, right? Now the ball is measured from the center. So if I have the ball, here's my ball like this, and this is going to be, in our case, 20. Well, if I wanted to bounce off here correctly, I need to move this ball half the radius over this way. Or alternatively, I can set the width so it's actually pretending that this is the width right here. So if I pretend this is the width, well, let me make that a little better there. So this is maybe my width. This, there we go. So that's the width. The ball needs to be 10 back this way. So that's why I minus 10. If the ball was 50 wide, I would minus 25. Or if the ball was 30 wide, I'd minus 15 to get it to get it set up correctly. All right, so minus 10 in this case. And same thing is here, I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to have 10 here, so if the ball's less than 10. So let's go ahead and check that out, see if that works. Here comes my ball, and it's moving really slow right now, which we'll fix in a minute. There it goes. It bounces nicely off the side of that screen, and let's see if it bounces off the side of this one. There we go. It's bouncing back and forth. We still have this problem though with having to change it in multiple places. So let's say if I set my delta 5 here, that means I'd have to come down here and set 5 and 5. Otherwise when the ball hits the edge it's going to start adding only negative 1. So now the ball is going to go a little bit faster and the ball will bounce back and forth and back and forth and it, and it looks a lot better this time. Okay, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to change it just up here. So how could I do that? Well, it's actually a little bit easier than you might think. If this is 5 and this just needs to be negative 5, and what will it do if the ball goes off this way? I want it to go back left, right? I want to go I want it to go back to the left. So I always want it to go in the negative direction if it hits the right wall. If it hits the left wall, I always want it to go back the other way. I want it to go towards the right wall or in the positive direction. So what I can actually do is just multiply x delta or I could do negative 1 times x delta and in this case if I'm hitting the left wall I can assume that I'm coming from the right so I'm headed in the negative direction and I can do negative 1 times delta again. All right, so now the ball is going to go back and forth, no problem. It's going to hit both walls. When it hits this wall, it will multiply the delta. So it multiplies 5 by a negative 1, which switches it so it goes in the opposite direction. So this way it's going positive, and then it hits it. It changes it to a negative, so it comes back. When it hits this wall, it's less than 10. When it gets to less than 10, it multiplies it. And since it's going this way, we know it's already negative. So a negative times a negative equals a positive. So it then comes back this direction. All right, so not too hard. So right now I've got two if statements and everything looks to be pretty good. Uh, alternatively, I don't need to have this one. I can just do this. Okay. So kind of cleaning up the code a little bit and now the ball is still doing the same thing. I just set x delta equal to negative x delta. So I'm just switching the sign. But You'll notice that we have the same code in both of these. And what the same thing I said about here is having to change the code in multiple places or having repeated code applies here as well. We actually don't want to repeat this. So I'm going to introduce one last thing today, and that is using statements that we can make compound if statements. And don't worry if the if statements are coming a little bit slowly right now if you're not 
quite understanding them. I'm going to use them a lot and I'm going to have a review next lesson over if statements and we'll do some more complex ones as well. All right, so in this case, the if statement, we can actually combine these. This is going to be true. If this is true, we want to do something. We also want to say if this is true or this is true, change the sign, meaning if we've gone all the way to the right and we're off the screen, then switch the sign of x delta. If we go all the way to the left and we go off the screen, switch the sign of x delta. So we kind of want something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and delete most of this other code and I'm just going to bring this up. So we kind of want this. If x is greater than with minus 10, meaning if it's off the right side, or if it's off the left side, do this. Well, we don't have to write code. We're not going to write code like this. We're going to shorten this. And we're going to use the OR operator. And the OR in Java looks like that. We also have to put everything inside a set of parentheses. So what this is saying is, it says, if this is true, or this is true, then switch the sign. All right, so we've, we've taken two if statements and we've combined them into one if statement. So let's go ahead and run this. And we should get the same effect as the ball coming back and forth and back and forth. And everything looks pretty good so far. All right, so right now ball is bouncing and we can change the speed up here however we want. Okay, so let's set the speed back at maybe three so we can see things a little bit better. So there goes the ball and it bounces and it bounces again. So looks good. All right. So this is this is the introduction to if statements. There's there's a lot more we can do with if, else if, and if statements. And I'm going to talk about those a little bit later. But right now I just want you to I want you to understand this code, why this works, why I used an or statement and why I didn't have multiple if statements when I could just have one. All right, so try to look at this code, play around with it, maybe uh, change the size of your screen, which now you're gonna notice if I do change the size of my screen to something like 700, the ball adjusts because I use width here, it will bounce off all the way over there. All right, so it's adjustable based on the size of the screen. And that's what we want. We want things to be flexible and we, we don't want to, if we want to modify our code, we don't want to have to change it in many, many different places. Just one place and that'll be good enough. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching. Well, don't worry. We'll review some of this next lesson and I'll talk about the if statement in more detail. All right. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next lesson.